This is how we make the moonshine. Oh, Would you my look God. Yeah. This is where you and Popcorn Sutton made his last run. I never thought we'd be up here thinking about making a run of liquor. In Haywood County, North Carolina, JB is leading Mark and Digger to the site where their friend and mentor, Popcorn Sutton, made his infamous last run. Tennessee's home to us. If we're going to run liquor, I'd rather run it in my back door. But right now, that's not an option because the police are back out in full force. They are on their A game right now. Right. 20 years. Been yeah. 20 years right yeah. now come July. Yeah, this is July. It'll be 20 yeah. years. Jay, but he, this is <laughs> sacred ground. You damn right, yeah. If there's a holy grail of moonshine, it's right here. Wow. This is where the rage of moonshine began. This is where Popcorn Sutton did his video, The Last Run. What little liquor comes off of this? Right people pay you $100 a gallon for it. Popcorn, he was the outlaw of moonshine. I'm just doing this so people could see how rough an old moonshiner's life was. He kept telling me, wish we could do a video the way my granddaddy and daddy done it. He said, we're going to keep the moonshine tradition going. This is the last damn run of liquor I'm going to ever make. I guess them revenue officers will be glad of that because they won't have to watch me no damn more. He done it out in the open too much. That's the reason he got caught, because he got too bold. And if I hadn't quit when I did, I'd have went to the pen. Cold chills running over my arm. Yeah. That's why it's just... You, you yeah. done right. His spirit's here. Oh, yeah, so something will go wrong. <laughs> That's exactly what was going through my mind. Boys, we ain't going to disturb none of this stuff. No. no, hell no. That'd be like jumping on the Statue of Liberty and cutting her ear off. Well, that's a fine stream. Yeah, it's good water. Is this far enough back from the law? I think that ought to do it. If this ain't far enough out of the dead gym <laughs> way, we deserve to be caught. Caught you that <laughs> With the fact that law enforcement's on our trail, we need to exercise all caution. And right now, we're just gonna hang out over here in North Carolina a while. I tell you what, Raider. Yeah? See, now you drug us in here. It's first run, it's gonna be yours. Oh, you yeah. tell us how yeah. you want it, we'll do whatever you dictate. Okay. You got anything in mind you wanna do? Well, yeah. popcorn always said something about making some pure corn, no sugar in it, but they never did do it. JB tells us that, that popcorn always promised him that they would do an all grain corn run, uh, no sugar. I want the pure corn, because he always said it was so damn good. It didn't produce much, but. Don't make a lot uh, of it. No, it gets you about a half a run of yeah, what sugar would. Yeah, pure corn, about 103 proof. You know, we always knew popcorn wanted to make an all grain run. He always talked about it. But the thing about it is, popcorn didn't have the patience. Let's get down here and get us a plan ciphered out. Yeah, well, we got to round us up some materials. 47 miles to get back out and get <laughs> something. Well, Jerry, it looks like we've made it over the mountain, buddy. Look at these valleys. Look at these mountains on both sides. Yeah, buddy, it's beautiful over here. On the North Carolina-Tennessee border, after a police raid cleaned out a season's cache of moonshine, Mike and Jerry are slipping across the state line where they can operate as relative unknowns. The heat's been on me and Jerry for a while, so we just crossed over into North Carolina. We need to be in a place we know we'll be safe and can evade the law or any other human coming in and finding us. Over in Tennessee, people know exactly who me and Jerry is. You know, here in North Carolina, we're just two regular guys. It makes me feel a little more comfortable, a little more hid. It's kind of under the radar. Well, that's some good looking water right down through here coming out. This is where the infamous Popcorn Sutton's from. He made a lot of liquor over here, and he's got a big name over here. And I respect that, but it's mine and Jerry's turn now. We up on a mountain up here, ain't we, brother? It's a pretty place, I guarantee. And look at the waterfall in there. I say that right there won't never dry up, will it? That ought to give us all the water we need. You know I don't want to haul that rig and everything across the mountain over here. No. You take a chance on getting caught with it, so no. we got to do something. I don't want to get caught crossing down state lines with something illegal in the back of my truck. That's a federal offense then, so we've got to build something new. Well, what's your thoughts on what we're going to run this year? I ain't got no damn clue, really. From what I've been hearing through the grapevine, you know, people's getting some money back in their pocket now. They're buying high-end alcohol, a lot of uh, barrel-aged, good high-end whiskeys and stuff is what they're, they're buying. Everybody that I've talked to are wanting high-end, barrel-aged whiskey. 
and they don't mind paying for it. Well, that stuff takes time. That's something we don't have a lot of time. We definitely don't have time to start filling up barrels because we got to start making money because we have none. What if we had the best of both worlds? What if we actually ran our liquor in a wooden barrel? Run liquor out of a wooden barrel. Yeah. A charred white oak barrel. Yeah. How in the hell are we going to do that? It's wood. We're going to put a core through it. Still going to get hot. It's going to get hot, but all we're doing is heating the steam. We can mash right in the barrel. I just have to draw it out and show you. But I've come up with an idea. I just don't think nobody's ever tried. I mean, who's going to try to make a moonshine steel out of a wooden barrel? Let's see what we got here. Here's our barrel, right? Right. We come in here and we cut us in a copper core. Mm -hmm. And we'll put heat to it, and all that heat will come just up this flue. We're going to try to put that barrel aged aroma and taste into it in the beginning while we're doing our mash. What we'll do is we'll stop us a couple of pieces of pipe on top, mm -hmm. so the core itself becomes part of the flue. Wood soaking all that mash in, mm -hmm. and then as we run it off, we're going to have something that's going to be essentially a charred taste, but it's going to be clear. I think it's going to give us a flavor like none other when this thing heats up. Oh, it definitely will. Usually, to get that wood charred flavor, you've got to let you know your alcohol sit for two to four years. That should give us the best of both worlds. But our goal is to make an unaged, aged alcohol. I'm ready to rock and roll with it, bro. Yeah, it's lit good. You want to get that water kind of rolling a little bit so before we add that corn. Oh, yeah. Corn, corn. The recipe that JB wants is all corn and no sugar. Coarse ground white corn meal. When you do all grains, you have to use quadruple the amount of grain in order to generate enough starch and natural sugars to produce any volume at all. That thing settled down. Yeah. It ain't going down none too fast, but it might again we get this bucket in there. Once it starts releasing the starches and comes into a clump, that's when it'll burn. So uh, when we dump all that corn in here, we go flame out. We got to keep stirring. We don't need no lumps. We let this sit here from the 210 degree temperature it's at right now till it gets down to about 160. Then we'll put our magic dust in there and let it do its work. Here, you want to do what I'm doing for a while? It reminds you of being a teenager again. <laughs> <laughs> this is JB's run. He come up with this, and Digger has learned me something here so special. I volunteered to do all the bucketing over. Don't splash that on your leg. No, nope, it'd be hot. You talk about doing that thump keg walk, no. you'll be doing the burnt sack boogie. <laughs> <laughs> burnt sack boogie. <laughs> now I'm not getting <laughs> So if we can get this barrel off, get a core in it, what do you think? Something like that, Bubba. Me and Jerry, we're making a steel out of a wooden barrel. You got it? Oh, yeah. Well, usually, it's done been mashed in even before we got a steel completed because we got all these barrels that laid out in the woods. In this case, we're going to be mashing in inside the steel. I'm just ready to get this damn thing built and get in the woods. I'm ready to get a run done. Heard that. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're going to try to use an American white oak barrel to mash in and run. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to put a core through the center of this thing. With this metal core, can heat it from the inside out. We can't just put a fire out into the barrel. It'll burn the barrel up. <gasps> Where's that whiskey? Well, we get to roll in this core, get her soldered up. Now we got to put this right in that damn hole right there, and it's got to fit. Yeah, I know. Making a four-inch core, about 36 inches long, to stick straight through the middle of this barrel. They sell, baby. You know, the most important thing about this whole entire build here is getting this core slammed through the center, nice and tight, where nothing's gonna leak. That's my biggest concern with this whole rig, that we're gonna sit here and leak our mash out before we ever get a chance to run it. There it is, right there. That looks pretty good, Mike. Now that we've got the core through the barrel, all we gotta do is flange one end, so we're actually gonna just hammer it as we go. That way it's a perfect fit. The flange to it, let's see what it looks like. I am super excited to get this thing in the woods. You know, to my knowledge, I have never seen anything like this done before, and if it works out good, it, it could be a, a whole new stepping stone for the moonshine industry. Looks good, don't it? My only concern, I think I need to solder this seam a little bit more. These flanges should be air and water tight. You can see it right there, but boy, I tell you, I'd like to come on up with it. And I noticed my solder joint soldered good all the way up, but I want to put just a little more solder to ease on up with it up toward that wood. Let's do it. Right. I'm gonna solder it from the inside. Oh! Damn. 
Oh, God. 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 Oh,